Hello everyone, Kase Hosale, Nodaj Doctor is back again with another brand new tutorial. In this video, I am going to be discussing about the music recommender system using Python and machine learning. So this is the applications. So you can see I select one song. I don't believe in Miracle. If I click on the show recommendation, it actually recommend me five similar types of music. So this tutorial is only dedicated for the music lovers who love music a lot. So what you need to do just comment your favorite song name on the comment box so let's say i'm going to select here another music name so let's say bat of nails if i click on the show recommendations it will recommend me five similar types of song so you can see here bat in summer this town warrior take uh, me as i am built for comfort oh that's called imagine dragon my favorite one right so let's say i'm going to select here another Let's say uh, you cannot stop me loving you, right? I'm going to select here show recommendations. So it will recommend me five similar types of song name still in love. Okay, that's fine. And I don't know why and drive I can eat love, right? So this is how it actually works. Now what I'm going to do here, you're going to building this whole application from the escorts. So stay tuned. So well, so this is a data set from the Kaggle that's called the Spotify million data set. So in order to build this project, you're going to be using this data set. So this is the data set having the four columns. So that's called artist, song, the link of the song, and also the text. So this text column actually represents the leadings of the song. So we are going to simply using these leadings in order to build this recommender system. So I'll actually discuss in this thing in the later on when you go to the coding part. So I'm just going to simply download this data set from here. Just clicking on this button and it will download the data set from the Kaggles, right? I'm going to click here, save it. So well, so this is a data set that I am downloading from the Kaggle. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm just simply going to extract the file. So after extracting that, I got here one CSV file that's called Spotify million data or CSV. So now what I'm going to do here, we need to do the coding part here. So for that, I'm going to be using here the Jupyter Notebook. You can use the PyCharm or you can use the Visual Studio Code, whatever you can. But I recommend to you, better you use Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab. You know, Google Colab is actually free to use. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to simply open my Jupyter Notebook. So type here CMD and I need to type here the Jupyter Notebook. So it will open on my uh, local or you can say default web browsers. That's also called a local host. So well, so my Jupyter Notebook is running up and down. So now I'm going to click here to create new Python file and it will create here one new IPNB file for me. So let's try to rename this file. Let's call the model uh, training, right? So how are you going to train the model, right? So now what we're going to do here, we're going to simply actually load the data set from our directory. In order to load one CSV file, so what library is actually going to use here? That's called the pandas, right? So I'm going to import here the pandas as pd. So let's import pandas as pd. Then I need to load it using the pandas. So that's why I'm going to use pd dot read. That's called read csv. So if you are using tab on your keyboard, it will actually auto suggest you. I mean the method that is still available inside this library is called read CSV. Now I'm going to give here my path of my CSV file. So I need to give here my name. It's called Spotify underscore million data million song dot data dot CSV, right? So shift enter. You can also use this run button from the Jupyter Notebook, right? So I'm going to use here the shortcutting that's called the shift and enter and it will actually import the data set in your Jupyter notebook right so if you see that it have the 50,615 rows and the four columns right so you can store it inside one variable that's called a df let's say df equal to pd dot read csv if you try to see the first five columns you can i mean five five rows so you can also do that let's say df dot hat i'm going to be interested on seeing the five rows of the data set first five rows right if you're trying to see it for last five one, you can also do it. So for that, what did you use? Simple, df.l. Let's say I'm really interested to see the last five columns of the data set, right? You can see here, five rows, not column actually, on the data set, right? So this is how it actually works, df.head and df.tail. You can also check the shape of that. So let's say gf.shape. You can see the shape of the data set. It having the four columns and 57,615 rows, right? Now I have to check that if there are any null values available here, right? We can check that. 
let's say df dot is null dot sum right see okay has no attribute sum right so it should be the map b is null okay it don't have any null values right i mean no missing value is available in my data set right so i don't need to actually handle this one so now what i'm going to do here i am simply uh, going to drop this link because i don't need the link one right i just need the song the artist name we need the artist name actually we are going to fetch in the poster from the spotify website using the spotify web api so for that we need this artist we need also song because this is my target column because based on the links i'm going to be predicting the song i mean song familiarity right so that's why i need this song text and the artist that's called the feature selection bird right so i don't need this link one so what i can do i am simply going to drop this link column from my actual data set so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to simply use here df dot drop and i'm going to pass here my column name i mean my column name which one i'm going to drop it so i'm going to column uh, drop this link one and on that i'm going to put here my axis is nothing but my true so you can use here true or one whatever and now i'm going to reset the index so let's say reset index and reset the index and drop equal to true that's it so you drop the uh what you can see drop the link column right from the data set if i'm trying to store it let's say df equal to df dot drop and if i'm trying to see it again let's say df dot hat okay so i actually put it zero let's put it 10. so it'll show me the first 10 rows of the data set right so now what i can do if i'm trying to see the first uh links of the data set i mean first links of the song because it's not showing up correctly so if i'm trying to see it let's say i'm going to use here df and text this is how you can actually show it the first one so this is how the first leading looks like look at her face it's a wonderful face uh, it meaning something special to me okay so this is the leadings of the songs so but you can see here some space extra space and also some backslash r and backslash n and also some value is capital and some are small so we need to handle this one right we need to handle this one so this is called a text cleaning so now it have the 57000 columns so uh, i don't have this much kind of gpu so for that i'm just working on a simple uh, 5000 row just for simplicity if you have the more amount of gpu you can training this this whole data set because it's probably take so much amount of time to actually uh, pre-process this whole data set so what i'm going to do here i'm simply going to actually taking the sample of that so for that i'm going to use here df dot sample i'm just going to take in the samples of the 5000 uh, because this is actually my laptop capability if you are using google Colab, maybe it's support right so df dot sample i'm taking the random 500 sample from the songs and that uh, data set so let's say let's say df equal to sample dot 500 so if i'm trying to see the shape let's say df dot shape now you can see it's converting to 5000 comma 3 right just for my simplicity you can also ignore this part df dot sample you don't need to take it if you have much more amount of gpu i think you are richer than me so that's why okay so now what we're gonna do we have to actually do the cleaning part like you know to actually remove these uh regular expressions or backslash n or capital small like this kind of thing so what i can do we can simply do the processing part here so that's called the text cleaning or you can say the text processing pre processing that's called text pre processing right so let's go on the markdown okay so what i can do we actually simply going to uh remove all the regular expressions i mean we just simply first convert this data set into the lowercase letter and after that we actually replace it right we're going to replace it with the blank space right so what i can do we can simply use here df and from the text we are going to simply convert this into lowercase so for that str dot lower we are going to using this to inert to convert this one into lowercase letter and after that we are simply replace it we are going to simply replace it I mean the regular expression that actually we have needed so we need to use here the r and regular expression from a to z so you need to use here the true so there's where is it this one okay then a 
to Z A. I mean small A to the capital Z A, and also the Z to zero to nine. I mean the number at zero to nine. I'm just going to replace it with a blank space. So there was a shortcut where to actually do it. <laughs> Let's call the regular expression part. So for that, what you can do, you can simply use here the backslash of W and backslash of S. So this is the shortcut one. You can actually use in this to replace this one. So after that, what you're gonna do, we're gonna simply replace it to the blank space. And we can replacing this thing, which one? I mean, which after that, we're gonna replace this blank space and also. Uh, we need to replace this backslash n and the backslash r so for that we can do you can simply again use the replace one that's called replace and after that uh, we are going to you replace the regular expressions so let's say backslash n with the uh, space blank space right and after that we're going to give here the redux equal to true because this is one regular expression redux equal to true so this is another word that you're trying to do that because i already built here one movie recommender system in this video i do some extra i mean do some in another way so this is quite different from, from that so now you can see here it actually uh convert this textual into the string to the lowercase letter all the lowercase letter and it is replacing all the expression on the backslash n okay you can see here so let's assign into the original textual data so for that what i can do we can simply use here this text so text and after that i'm going to just replace it right so this is the most important topic in the whole tutorial so make sure that you watch this one carefully right so so we actually do the cleaning part on our textual data right on our textual data we actually removing the space unwanted space and also the backslash and we replace it using the blank space a single blank space so now what I can do, uh, this is the text cleaning. Now we need to actually convert this textual data into some kind of token, right? So that we can actually let on convert this token into one kind of vector, right? One kind of vector. So there are so many uh, vector that the technique is actually available. So one called the TFIDF, right? So another one is called the bag of word, right? and another one is called the word to back so these are the technique to actually convert this textual data into the vector but before that we need to actually remove the unwanted word let's say i have one word that's called you are so beautiful let's say you are so beautiful right so let's say you you have another word is called the beauty right and another one is called the but right so both the word are mostly similar so why should I actually uh, calculate that why should i calculate the distance of that why so i need to convert this three one into one single one so that i don't have uh, take enough time or i don't need to calculate these things again and again that's why we have need to do the tokenizations right we need to do the tokenizations or you can also say that's called streamer to actually convert this uh, it's not steam actually it's called steam so to actually uh, convert this data into one single one single frequency let's say it's actually convert this beautiful beauty and beauty to the beauty well so this is how we actually work this porta steamer it available in my nltk library the natural language processing library so after that what do you actually do here after that we need to convert this uh, whole textual data into one kind of vector right that's called the vectorizations right so then after that what you can do we are going to calculate the distance calculate the distance of the each vector right so after calculating the each distance of the vector so what we can do we are going to simply recommend the song based on the distance so which kind of distance that you can actually calculate here euclidean no we don't need to actually calculate this equivalent distance because this is not working on this case so this is so simple actually calculate the distance 
from the one data point to the another data point. Let's say we have one space. This is space. We have the X column. We have the Y column. So this is my song. This is my song. Let's. This is my song and this is my song. So if I, what is the equivalent distance? Actually, it actually calculate the distance from here to here. But we are not going to calculate this kind of distance. We're going to calculating the theta. We're going to calculate the theta of the data set of the music of the song, right? So let's say we have uh, distance. Theta distance is nothing but zero. And that's mean this is the same song or the similar song. Let's say theta distance is nothing but call five. That's mean this is the most kind of similar song of that larynx. So this is how it actually work. So this is called the cosine similarity, right? It is called the cosine similarity. So using this one, what I can do, we simply calculate the gap, calculate the theta of the each data point. I mean each song. And after that, what I can do? We're going to simply calculate the distance and we're going to recommend the song to the user. So this is how the recommendation system actually works. So there are so many techniques are available. So many techniques are available. So you can be using here the content base, right? You're going to be using the content based recommendation system. That's why we actually focusing on the tag. We are focusing on the tag. We convert these tags into the vector. We convert the tags in the token. So that's why it's called a content base. So there are so many available. That's called the collaborative filter, right? It actually uh, working based on the user recommend. I mean user ratings. And we another have the populations, right? It's called also called the famous. So which one of the famous? Based on the famous, it actually recommend to you the song, right? And also another have that's called the hybrid, right? Another call that's called the hybrid. So hybrid is nothing but the combine of the content base. I mean tag base. And also the rating base, right? So YouTube is nothing but using the hybrid recommender system right now. Maybe Amazon or Alibaba or this kind of services product actually using this site hybrid recommender system. So that's why we actually focusing on the tag, right? Understand? Now what we're gonna do here? We are going to simply go on the Jupyter notebook again, right? Let's go. So well, oh, unfortunately, my laptop is uh, going to stop. Maybe it's not taking the heavy load because uh, recording and also the pad, all the kind of things actually actually happening here. That's why it's not taking the load correctly, right? So I am just going to run this shell again because I'm going to run this shell again here uh, to do that. Okay, fine. So now what I can do, I am simply going to see the text. Let's say, so let's say df. So this is my data set. Let's say I'm going to see the, let's say I'm going to see the, let's say last column. Let's say see the last, let's not see the five. So this is the, my last five. So it is replacing the data set. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to simply uh, convert this, uh, all the textual data into the tokenization. And after that, you can do the streaming, right? So for that, what I can do, we need to import here the NLTK that you're discussing here. Then we need to import here the from NLTK. That's called from NLTK dot Steam dot portal. From portal, we are going to be importing here the Steam portal, or you can see the portal Steam. So I'm going to import here the portal Steam. That's called port uh, portal Steam. So make sure if you don't know what the spelling is, so you can use this tab. So it actually auto suggests to you uh, this kind of tags, right? So shift enter, it will actually include it here. Now what I can do, I am simply going to create one object of that so let's call porter steamer so porter steamer and i am going to assign into one variable let's call let's call steaming let's say steamer right what okay so this call is steamer so initialize here the object of that now what i can do i am simply creating here one predefined functions i just going to actually build it in my own so which one actually helps me to convert this all the text into token and after that you can apply here the portal streamer so now we're going to uh, define here one function that's called dap that's called token which one taking one text as argument and after that i'm going to converting this text into token using this nltk that's called nltk dot word token so let's call the word token so which are actually uh, helping you to tokenize your 
a whole text so i'm going to pass here my text and let us assign into the variable is called token now what i can do it have so many amount of token so i need to iterate to all the token from here and we are going to store it inside one list so for that i'm going to use here a simple shortcut technique to do that let's call the for each loop so i'm going to iterate to all the bill from here let's say for w in token and i'm going to apply the steaming part here in a single in a single line right so let's say i'm going to here a steamer and i'm going to use here the method is called steam okay let's call this steam so this one is steam and i'm going to pass my w right so this is how you can do this thing you can actually iterate to all the value from the token i i mean token and you can store it inside the uh, list with having the steamer so what i can do i'm going to simply assign to the value that's called let's say call a right well so it's working so we need to also join them so you need to also give here on return statement because if you are creating one function you need to also return here something right so for that what i can do you can simply using the join method to actually joining this full steaming so let's say i'm trying to take test it out let's say token let's say you are beautiful let's say you are beautiful they're actually discussing about here beautiful right well shift enter and you can see here you are beauty so if i'm trying to use here another one let's call beauty so shift enter you can see here you are beauty beauty right so this is how we actually converting this uh all kind of same word in a one single word so that it not actually calculate the same piece again and again now what i can do we need to convert these uh things into the vector right into the vector so for that we're going to be using here the tf idf vectorizer or it is called the tf mean term frequency idf mean increase frequency vectorizer right so for that what you can do you're going to import it from the scikit learn so for that you can import here from scl learn dot feature extraction because this is the feature extraction part and from the feature extractions we are going to use the text one because we are going to be importing using the textual data so for that you're going to be using the feature extraction or text and after that i'm going to import here the tfidf vectorizer right and also you need to actually import here the cosine similarity in order to calculate the theta distance from the each data point so for that i'm going to import it let's say from sklearn dot pr wise from pair wise uh, this is available inside my matrix because this is the cosine simulator so from the matrices from the pair wise i'm going to be importing here i'm going to be importing here the cosine similarity right cosine similarity so cosine distance and we have the cosine similarity well so shift enter so it's actually loading this uh, library on my jupyter notebook now what i can do i am going to simply uh using this uh token using these functions inside my whole data set so for that what i need to use here i need to actually create here one lambda function we can actually do it here we can actually do it so we need to apply this a uh, token functions in the whole data set right in df uh this text so for that what i can do we can simply use here df of text dot apply so we are going to be applying so we are going to iterate iterate iterating to all the value from the text and after that we're going to apply it in our uh, function that's called token so it will take one textual data so you're going to simply use here, here one lambda functions that's called the anonymous functions so simply i'm going to pass the my token right so it will take time because it actually converts into the 5000 uh vector or you can say 5000 word or 5000 links into quota estimate after that you should actually apply the tokenization so definitely take two or three minutes so well it convert these things into the token i mean you can see here it actually uh, converting all the things all the single things in one single word okay so now what we can do we can apply here the tfidf vectorizer so i need to create here one instance of that so let's say tf idea vectorizer so inside that we have the analyzer so we have the analyzer so we are going to analyzing the which one we are going to analyze the word and we need to also 
remove the stop word so we're going to removing the stop word based on the language so you're going to using the english language so that's why i'm going to pass here the step word should be the english right so then after that what are you going to do i'm just going to store in into the variable called tfid okay shift enter so it initializes in the tfid app right so now what you can do i am going to simply using the feed transform so tidf dot feed transform that's called the feed transform to the whole data so feed transform this one and what i'm going to do here i'm going to pass my data right i made my textual data well so you can see here this is nothing but call one sparse matrix sparse matrix of the data so if i'm trying to store it into one variable that's called the matrix so you can see this is one kind of sparse matrix it's one kind of matrix actually so if i'm trying to see the matrix so let's say matrix okay uh you can see this uh, matrix actually so what i can do we can simply using the cosine similarity here apply the cosine similarity and we're going to pass here my matrix right and now cosine similarity is applied and you can see here now vector okay this is the similarity value this is the similarity data point right because you need to convert this textual data into the numerical data so that we can actually we can actually calculate them we can apply the machine learning algorithm right so this is how it actually works you can convert this textual data into the one numerical format right so now let's sign into the variable that's called a similarity let's let's say you can saw the similar right similar right let's call similar okay so if i try to see the first one so let's call similar the first one you can see the okay it's called smiler similar right so let's use this one similar okay similar is not defined okay this one so you can see the first array of the index right so now what you can do uh i need to create here one recommender functions so which one actually help you to recommend me the song based on the theta distance right so well i just need to stop this recording again because you know again it's stuck the laptop so that's why i need to start it from again so well so what we're now we're going to do we are going to now start the id number for the is song name so for that what i can do we can actually using this df of text so let's call df of text so this one and after that what i can do we are going to checking the song name so this is not actual text it should be the song okay if the song name is like that we have uh let's select one song so waiting for the man i'm going to selecting this text so let's say if the song is like that we just not too interested to show the whole data let's say df right so this is the whole data point right i mean the whole uh row so we are going to be interested to see the index number right so to give me the index number now using this index number we can actually calculate the distance of the east data point and using this data point we are going to recommend here the song name so now we need to actually create here one recommender functions right we need to create here one recommender function let's convert it into the markdown okay well so now let's define the recommender functions so let's say def recommender and it will text here it is taking here one song so let's say give it one song name and now what i can do i am going to actually uh, using the same same technique to actually taking the index i mean taking the id of the each uh, song so now what i can do i am simply assigning to the variable that's called idx idx so also convert this waiting for the man should be the song name song name well now what you can do you're going to calculate the distance right so for that what you can do we are going to simply creating the list and inside this list you're going to be using the enumerate to enumerating all the value based on the idx because you need to pass here my id on my similarity so for that i'm going to copy this one I'm going to pass here the similarity we need to pass here by ids so this is my ids if you try to see it for id1 you can see this is the vector so we are going to enumerating all the value from the uh, similarity and after that what we can do we can simply short it right so for that we're going to use here the shorted method and then what i can do we can simply reverse it 
we can simply reverse it reverse it so reverse should be the true you can also pass here the one now we're going to use here the key should be the lambda lambda and we're going to using the here the interest rate on the first one right and after that we need to store these things in the inside one list so let's assign into the variable that's called the distance now based on the cosine similarity distance we are going to recommend here the song so let's say for song id so this is called sid in distance distance we are interested to see the first five songs right so we're going to simply append it inside my list append and i'm going to pass here df.ilog because i need to start this point from my data set df.ilog and i'm going to pass here my song id and with having the zeroth index because i'm interested to the id number index and for that from that i'm going to be interested to start the my song right then i'm going to return here my song my song now what i can do i am simply going to calling these functions right recommender now what i can do i am going to give here one name so let's give here the same name let's call the waiting for the man let's try to see it waiting for the man shift enter boom it give me the error index this one out of axis of zero to five oh shit see one thing one thing we have the fifty-seven thousand rows but we're working on the five thousand column right but it should give me the forty-five thousand rows the number of five forty-five thousand rows why definitely we go here on mistake right so the mistake you should do maybe yes here we should do the mistake here because we're taking the sample but how you drop the link link column then we can take the samples based on the sample it actually record drop the whole column so that it's not changes again and again it not changes the things again and again so that's why it's not actually recommend me this kind of things right so for that what i can do i am going to simply using this one i'm going to remove it i'm going to using the sample here you can also use here the 57,000 uh, rows, I mean 54,000 data set because I don't have any much more amount of GPU, so that's why I don't use it. I just working on the simple uh, 5,000 for the simplicity purpose, I mean testing purpose, I'm just using it. So now again, I need to run the shell again. So now let's see which kind of error we get. Is there any error or not, or it actually going with the music or not? Okay. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So it's learning. So we need to also select here one. You can see now for the tail, it have 400, 4,099. I mean, now it's working fine. So in your eyes, let's say I'm going to copy this one because it actually give me the error. Okay. It's over dirty white boy. Oh, it's really coming with the music, right? So five music. Well. So baby, I am a big surprise. I am coming out, living, dramatics coming up. Okay, so you recommend me the uh, song. Let's say I'm going to be interested to see the first 21. Wow, boom. It should recommend the 521 songs based on your search. So now what I can do, I am going to simply uh, store it inside my pickle file so that you can actually use it later on. So when you're building the web application, definitely we need it, right? So for that, I'm going to import here the pickle, so import pickle, and now I'm going to use here the pickle dot dump, and I need to store the similar, I mean the similarity, and also my data frame, also my data frame, right? So what I can do, we can simply using this open, and we need to give here one name and also the mode. So the mode is nothing but the right mode and name let's call similarity well and now i need to also dump here my data set so that's why what i can do i'm going to simply pass here it's called df and let's say call df boom right so this is how we dump our whole model so now what i can do we can simply using this similarity and the data frame in our web application so now let's go on the Visual Studio code. So well, so this is the code for the web applications. I create here a file, let's call app.py. 
and paste the code. So in order to build in the web app, we are going to use here a Python library that's called Streamlit. So what is actually Streamlit? So Streamlit is a web framework in Python, which can actually help you to develop your machine learning model in web without any knowledge of HTML, CSR or JavaScript. And also we're going to use here the Spotify web API. So for that, what we need to do, we need to actually create here one account on the Spotify developer. And we are going to use the web API in order to face the album poster of the phone. So now let's go on the Spotify developer account and I'll be discussing all the things in later on. So well, so this is the Spotify for developer website and you can see here the documentation. You can read their documentation. You can see here what product that's are available. It's called web API. Basically, you're going to actually using this web API. So for that, you need to sign on here, right? I'm mean, sign up here. I create one account, right? I already create my account and go on my dashboard. And you can see here, I already create here one application that's called music recommender system. If I go on here and you can see here all the state and you can see here my statics, right? And if I go on the settings, you can see here my client ID, my applications name, my application descriptions, and also one redirected URL. This is nothing but for callback. You can keep as you, as you can, right? So what we are going to do here, we are going to collect the client ID and also the a secret key basically that is needed for me in order to actually face the poster from this uh stream lit not stream lit, actually spotify web developer account i mean api to in order to face the album posters of the music so this is nothing but my a uh, dashboard so if i go on my dashboard again so if you're trying to create one app so how can you do that just click on this create app button and you have to give here your app name your descriptions and the redirected url and just click on the save and also select the checkbox and it will actually create one app for you so after creating the app just need to go on the setting that's actually go like that and after that uh, you can get here your client id and the secret key right client id and the client secret key so that's it to actually needed to paste the poster from the spotify developer account right now let's go on the bs code so well, we created the app on our Spotify website for the developer. So now what you can do, we can actually access the poster using this API. So for that, what you need to do, we need to actually initialize here my client ID and the secret key that we actually copied from our applications. And also you need to import here the Spotify and also import here the Spotify client credentials because you need to pass here this credential that's called client ID and the client secret. So for that, what I can do, we import it from Spotify.oauth to import the Spotify client credentials. Then we are going to create here one instance of that, or you can say object and pass this argument as a parameter, client ID and the client secret. Okay. And after that, what I need, we need to do, we need to actually create here, we need to also pass it inside my Spotify. So for that, we actually create the Spotify or Spotify objects. And after that, we're going to pass here my client credential manager, right? Again. So you import here the Spotify and you import the credential from the Spotify.o auth2 and we have our client ID and the client secret. We pass it inside our Spotify client credentials because it will take, if, if you hover over here, you can see here client ID, client secret, proxies, request sessions, request timeout and catch handler. It also take that, just you need to give here the two one, right? You don't need the, another one, right? So now what you can do, we simply using the Spotify library and we are going to using the Spotify dot Spotify and pass here my client credential manager. That's it now. So now what I can do, we are going to first recommend the song, right? Recommend the song. Let's say I'm selecting one song that's called Dukko Bilash, right? And it will recommend me uh, five similar kind of music, right? So for that, what do you actually do? We first actually give here one header that's called music recommender system and we actually uh, load all the file that we actually save it while I are training the model. So we load our DF. This is nothing but our data frame after processing and we have our similarity. So inside this data frame, we have three column right now. Uh, if I go on here, you can see uh, this is our data frame. You can see here the artist song link and the text. We actually remove this link one. So we have three column inside my data frame. I mean df.pkl file, right? So now what you can do, we are going to actually select this song based on the song we need to also access the artist because we need to pass how you actually try trying to track the a poster or you can say face the poster from the spotify web api we need to also pass the artist name and also the song name that's why we need the data frame 
Now we have the similarity. Let's call the cosine similarity. Now based on that, we are going to recommend the form, right? So this is the function for recommending the form. So if I see, it will same as it is that you do in the model training part. So this is called index, right? Simple distance. Just we actually change two things here. We just simply create here two empty list. One is for music name and another one for posters, right? So what actually do? We actually um, access it inside our data frame. We have the data frame that's called music from using the ILO. Go on the first column. The first column is nothing but artist, first one. And we have the artist, right? That's mean this one, right? This one. And from there, we are going to actually access the artist name, right? Now, what I can do based on the based on the song. Let's say I'm going to selecting here uh, bang and it will actually uh, give me the artist name at let's say A B B A, right? This is the artist name, right? Now we got our artist name. Now what I can do, we can simply print it, right? Now we are going to pass this artist name, right? Artist name inside our cat song album cover URL functions, or you can say method. But you want to also pass here my music name, right? Also my music name. So the music name should be the music dot ilog and dot song. This song is available inside my data frame. This song, right? Then we simply pass it inside my get song album URL cover URL. So if I pass it here, it will actually give me this kind of link. Okay, let's discuss about here. And also we need to uh, append it inside my recommend music names list. So this function actually taking one song name and based on the song name, it will recommend you the music, right? So let's say return here the return music names and also the let's say recommend music poster, right? Now let's understand these uh, functions. That's called the get song album cover URL. It actually give you the cover URL for the album. So what it actually do, you need to pass here your song name, right? And also the artist name. So you actually extract the bill from here, right? So you pass here my song name and also the artist name. Now based on the search query, it will searching using this Spotify SP, right? SP.search have a method and it will pass you the search query and type is nothing but track, right? Now based on the track, what you're going to do? We're going to access the album photo. So for that, we're going to be using here the research result and inside this data, we have the track and we have the items. Now using this, what I can do, we're going to access the track and also the album cover URL photo, right? And now you can simply paint it and you can see you actually painting here the return album cover URL. So this function actually give you the album cover URL. Now let's say we do, we actually don't get any photo on the web API. So we can actually uh, return here one a photo of the Spotify uh, logo, right? Like that, if you, you, you see in the demo, we, if the photo is not actually accessible from the website or the web API, we just simply pass it here and Spotify logo, right? So this is how it actually work. Then what you need to do, uh, we actually create here one movie list for the song. Okay, this is not movie list. This should be the music list, okay? So if you miss my movie recommender system, you can also follow this out. It's mostly similar like that. Okay, this should be the music list, right? So music list is music.song.values because this song name is available inside my data frame. Now we simply use here one select box and inside this type or select the song from the drop down menu. Now we actually give here one button. So it will actually, when I click this button, it will actually show the recommendations. So we actually call this function and it will return me uh, two values. One is nothing but called the music names and another one is the poster, album URL. We create here five columns, call one, call two, call three, and call four. So with column one, we actually uh, show the music number one. We show the music number one, four, two. Then we have the two, we have the three, we have the four and like that, right? So it is actually using the index one. That's why it start from the zero. So if you're trying to show the 20 or uh, 15 kind of similar kind of music name, you can also do that, right? I just uh, interested to show, see the five, and the five, uh, first five top music name based on my selections. So this is how it actually works. Don't run the code. I'll get, I'll give this code in the video description. So there is no password, right? Right now there is no password. Just make sure to subscribe to the channel, right? And hit the bell icon and share it with your friends, right? So now what I can do, we can simply run this code. So for that, what to do, I need to go on here and go on the terminal and you can see here new terminal, right? So what I can do, we can simply type here the streamlit, right? Streamlit run, right? app.py and enter. 
and it will open its application on your local browsers and uh, you can saw local host so well now you can see here the app is running up and down major recommender as a header and you can see here drop down menu and inside this you have all the music list right so let's allow this screen and click on the show recommendation let's see if it will actually work or not right well so you can see here it recommended me the uh, song name with their album photo right with your album photo right you can see a dance and set the night right to music manic depressions <laughs> okay let's select here another a uh, music name let's say nowhere <laughs> and click on the show recommendations and let's say okay now you can see here the spotify uh log is actually appearing on here because it's it's unable to face the album poster maybe you don't have the album photo so that's it not unable to face the poster so by default you're actually showing the spotify logo that's why it's actually showing the spotify logo right so you have to actually handle exception right so let's select here another 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 one okay let's say i can see it in your eyes <laughs> the romantic types of songs maybe okay so yep i love you <laughs> the last song the house without windows all eyes word for word so let's select here the last one let's see some interesting one okay let's see let's see let's see let's see okay love me tender <laughs> okay so let's select here to show recommendations so let's see fanny love me do i think i am in love okay love it love it no more looking okay <laughs> no more looking for love <laughs> that's fine okay so this is how the music recording system actually work hope you enjoyed this tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channels and share with your friends right and also help me to reach on the 20 subscriber because it actually gave me the motivations to making this kind of uh, cool projects right so thank you and bye bye